Do you like scraping? Oh yeah, that's some good scraping right there. Oh, not that one. That one kind of sucks. Oh, that one is pretty good. Oh, what am I even doing? Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm TechDweeb. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for clicking on the video today. This video is about scraping art for your ROB library. You can use this technique to scrape art for any device or application, but I'm going to show you how to do it for the BU Mini, which is my current favorite retro emulation device. I freaking love this thing. I did a video on this device, unboxing and game testing, and then I made another video showing off the new custom firmware Onion OS. And then I made a two minute tutorial on how to install Onion OS. All of those videos are linked below. Before I show you how it's done, let me quickly go over the basics. What is scraping anyways? Retro emulation device or certain emulation front ends, they often let you have art for your games. The art might be the original game box or a screenshot or even a combination of images. Those are my favorites personally. You don't need to download these individually, obviously, for all your games. That would take freaking forever. Uh, you can download them using various programs and they'll automatically get all the art for your entire ROM library. This is called scraping. Downloading the art for a game library all at once, automatically. Programs like Retrobat on Windows or Monocera for Linux, they have built-in scraping options. But for devices like the Ambernic 280V or the BU Mini, you have to do it on your own. Luckily, there's a handy program called Scraper that facilitates this. And that's what I'll be showing you today. See, on my 280V, I have all the art for all the games in each library. It, it looks great. It's just a, a really engaging way to browse your game library. It's pretty important for my enjoyment of these devices. Sometimes I want to browse through the game collection to pick a new game I've never played before, but viewing games by their name alone it doesn't tell you much about whether or not you'll enjoy a game. And that's why looking through the screenshots, it's a, it's a lot more fun and inviting, in my opinion. All this art for all these systems, I scraped using the Scraper application. The art is downloaded from a website called Screen Scraper. Once you configure the Scraper app to identify your game library, it can automatically download all the art for your games from the Screen Scraper website. There's a few steps involved and it's not so easy to figure out, so just follow my steps here and you should be good. And what I'll show you will work for any device because the fundamentals are the same. You can use this to scrape art for pretty much any emulation front end or retro gaming emulation handheld or console. Before we get started, you'll need four things. Number one, a screen scraper account. You can sign up for a free account, but you'll have a limit on the amount of files you can scrape in one day. I believe the limit for free accounts is like 20,000 files, but if you sign up to pay them a dollar a month on Patreon, you get a limit of up to 50,000 files a day. I've been a Patreon member for over a year now. I'm happy to keep supporting the work that they do. I'll include a link to their website and also to their Patreon in the description below. Once you sign up, you'll need your login and password to scrape art using their service. Number two, Scraper. It's a program for Windows and it's free. You can download it from their website. The link is in the description below. Download that and install it. Number three, a ROB library. I can't tell you how to get your ROB libraries, you filthy pirate. Lots of these retro emulation devices come with ROBs, or you can search for them yourself. Hint, hint. You can scrape art directly to the library, whether it's on an SD card or your PC. I like to have the ROB library on my PC, and then scrape it to that library, and then I can copy it to my various devices, folder by folder. One important thing is that your ROB library uses standard naming conventions. Scraper will automatically find the best match when it can identify the game from the name of the file, but if your files are named all weird, then it won't be able to identify which game is which, and it won't be able to scrape the art. I haven't had a problem with this. It, it, it's pretty good at knowing which game is which, but if you have any problems, then, then check the naming on your ROM set. Number four, a YouTube tutorial video from a channel you're subscribed to. In this case, the video you're watching right now is your YouTube tutorial video, and you're subscribed, right? And that's it. We're ready to get started. Let's go. Here's my laptop. Uh, do you like my desktop wallpaper? I made it myself, if you can believe that. There's a link to the wallpaper in the description below if you want to use this on your 
a PC for some reason. <laughs> Let's take a look at our ROM library and make sure everything's in order. I have a small library here for demonstration. Just a few games in a few folders. The naming of these folders matches the Miu Minis naming conventions. It's not a big problem when it's named in your personal library because I'm going to show you how to make sure that each system is recognized. We also need to know where the scraped images are held on your emulation device or program. Usually you can find these folders when you browse the files on your device. <laughs> I can't tell you what the uh, folders are for all the devices or programs in the world, so you'll need to figure those out on your own. Today we're doing the BU Mini, which is a subfolder called IMGS in each ROM folder. So now that we have our ROM library, we're ready to get scraped in. Start up Screen Scraper and you'll be asked to log in with your Screen Scraper account. Uh, did you sign up for an account like I told you to using the link below? Yeah? Uh, good. Now we need to choose a default system to use as a base. It doesn't really matter which one you choose because you can customize them, but I find that Recall Box is a good starting place for these retro handheld emulation devices like the VU Mini. The next thing we'll need to do is select the location of our ROM library. You can either scrape the art right to the ROM library on your SD card if you want to select that, but I'm going to choose my ROMs folder on my PC. Make sure you select include non recall box ROM folders here. You'll see some of your systems get instantly recognized. 10 out of our 16 systems are detected, but some don't. And that's okay. I'm going to show you how to add those manually. Just click next until you get to the main interface. The first step here is to click the little plus button at the bottom of the games list so that we can manually add all the systems that are missing. I'm just going to look at my list on the left and I could see which ones aren't detected in Scraper on the right. So Atari 2600 is there, Arcade. Oh, oh look, okay, so our NES folder is called FC for Famicom. It's not in the Scraper list. So we need to select Nintendo Entertainment System from the list of systems here. Just click on the Nintendo Entertainment System to select it. Then we're going to keep going through the systems listed in our library to find the systems that are missing and click on the mid scraper. For the BU Mini, I had to find NES, uh, Sega Mega Drive, which is Sega Genesis, Neo Geo Pocket, PC Engine, which is TurboGrafx-16, a PlayStation, and Super Famicom, which is Super Nintendo. Once you've done that, click the OK button, and you'll see that they're now added to your systems listed scraper. But the actual directory that these new links point to won't be right, so you'll have to manually edit the directory for each of these new systems. So for Mega Drive, I'm going to click on Mega Drive in the systems list, and then put MD as the Mega Drive folder to match my ROM library here in the area on the right. These are case sensitive, by the way, so make sure whatever directories you enter are the right case that matches your ROM library. You'll need to do this for all the systems you added. MD for Mega Drive, FC for NES, NGP for Neo Geo Pocket, PCE for TurboGrafx-16, PS1 for PlayStation, and SFC for Super Nintendo. The next step is to click on all systems at the top of the systems list so that whatever changes we make are now applied to all the systems at once. Now click on the Media tab. Everything else we're going to do is in here. Now you can see that there are two images shown here. Our device only supports one single image for each ROM, so click on the 3D box and then click the minus button to remove it. You can see the default is the three images mix, which I do like. This is my personal preference most of the time. I use this style of preview on my Ambler Nick 280V for instance, but on the BU Mini the screenshots are actually pretty small on the screen, so I'm not going to go with a mix. I want one single image, which we can change by toggling the media type menu to, on the left to image. Now, the, the Miu Mini Preview Art is a maximum size of 250 pixels by 350 pixels. So that's what we're going to enter. And make sure you select the keep image ratio so that it doesn't stretch the image. This is obviously more of a vertical size. So I think something like a, a 3D box art would fit nicely on this device. But I personally prefer to browse through my library with screenshots because it actually shows what the game looks like and that's more useful to me so that's what I'm gonna use just a, a simple screenshot the final step is to change the images path like I said this is different on each device but on the BO mini I, we want this to be the ROM root folder slash IMGS slash IMGS has a capital I and a lowercase MGS by the way uh, this is case sensitive if you remember and, and now we're ready to start scraping click the little play button and if you set it up correctly it'll go through the process of downloading the art for each game it could take a long time so grab a diet root beer and be patient when it's done you'll hear some mario music and that lets you know that you're done 
Go ahead and browse through your game folders to see that all the images are added in the IMGS folder. If something went wrong, then there was some setting that you didn't get right. So, you know, just make sure it's all good. Uh, one little quirk to this program is that it creates a gamelist.xml file in each directory. We don't need them, and I don't want those showing up in my games list. So I like to delete them by searching the ROMs directory for game list and deleting everything that it finds. Now, if you did this to your ROMs library on your PC, then you'll have to copy it over to your SD card, eject it, and then shove it back in your MIU MIDI and take it for a spin. When you get to the games list, you just press right on the D-pad and you'll be able to see the screenshots for the games as you browse up and down. This isn't super elegant on the BU Mini. It works much better on the Ampler NIC 280B, in my opinion. I hope they update this to make the menu and screenshots display better, you know, where you can see the, the whole list of games and a nice big screenshot all at once. But it works well enough. It gets the job done and it's nice to be able to preview the games as you browse and you find new games that look like they're going to be fun from the screenshots. Not bad, right? And that's all there is to it. It's pretty easy. It makes your game library more engaging to browse and discover new games. It makes having a retro game console or an emulation front end just straight up funner. Funner? Is that a word? No? Okay. I'm more better. How's that? And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this useful. And I hope that I explained everything okay. Please leave any questions you have in the comments below or suggestions for future videos or just whatever you want to say. Just leave your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. As always, I'm TechTweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.